Hi everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So we are working in filling in the uh, rest of the first pass here, this corner here. We're gonna finish that today. And we're almost at 13%, so maybe we'll reach that by the end of the session, we will see. But uh, yeah, made good progress. Like I've said, I don't know if I'm going to actually make it to the 15%. That might have been a bit too much. So we'll see what happens. Oh, you're not going to start that again, are you? Okay, here we go again. My gosh. <laughs> okay, you're going to let me work now? Okay, stopped doing that. So let's hope that continues. If not, I'll have to, as I said... Close out Pattern Keeper and try again. So let's see. Yeah, I don't know why it has this problem now where it does that. Let me just make sure that it is capturing. Otherwise, there won't be much point in making this session if you can't see what I'm doing on my, <laughs> on my pattern there. But uh, yeah. So yeah, still lousy air quality here. You're probably as sick of hearing about it as you are, as I am of dealing with it. Yeah, it's a bad headache today. I've taken Tylenol, but it's just sort of taking the edge off. It's still there, unfortunately. I don't know if it's the smoke or like the glare coming through the window. I, I don't know. Sometimes I find it more hard on the, uh, the eyes when um, it's overcast or the, you know, the sun is blocked for whatever reason this time. It's because of the, because of the smoke rather than, um, rather than clouds. But yeah, either way, I find the glare from that is sometimes worse than when it's just bright, sunny skies. So, blech, yeah. Yeah, I have my the house to myself for a week. <laughs> my uh, my husband and son went up to the Northwest Territories to do work at a job site there. Um, yeah, son was hired for um, as an official assistant, like with a contract and everything. So, <laughs> but yeah, they said the smoke is even worse up there. They had to have the um, car on recirculated air the entire way. Because, yeah, it was just nasty. They took some pictures, and yeah, it looks worse than here. There's like a halo around the sun because there's that much that much uh, smoke in the air. Yeah, it's, it's gross. Yeah, and they said you have to be careful. The roads are rough up there, and you have to follow the speed limit. Because if you don't, you get air, which they discovered the hard way. <laughs> yeah, they were going a bit faster. Not a lot, like it was 50 kilometers and they were going like, you know, 60. But uh, yeah, my husband said uh, they got a little bit of air coming around a quarter and uh, he said if everything hadn't been well strapped down, that that could have been an issue, yeah. Our son said, gee, dad, you need to, sh you need to slow down, you know, oh my gosh. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, they're up there. They have to remove a bunch of equipment from... Uh, an old building that uh, is slated to be demolished. It <clears throat> it got mold problems and there's asbestos in it. And it's, it's one of those where it would be so much more work and uh, expense to, to fix it, to get it up to safety standard that, yeah, they're better off just tearing the whole thing down and starting over. So, yeah. So, yeah, they had to get proper... Um, breathing masks and stuff to wear to make sure they don't inhale any any spores or asbestos particles. Like the asbestos is contained in the ceiling and they're not like drilling into it, so it shouldn't be a problem, but you know, it's one of those better safe than sorry, you need to wear the proper personal protective uh, equipment. So yeah. So yeah, we had to get kiddo some uh, steel toe shoes and a uh, hard hat and the breathing apparatus. Yeah. 
I did not know that they made um, steel toes in like shoes. They look like running shoes rather than boots. I thought they only had in them in work boots, but no, they had them in that. Although they kind of look like runners, but I mean, they have the soles are like an extra inch thick. So yeah, it's like wearing platforms. So yeah, you had to wear them around the house for a while to break them in and to get used to being a, an extra inch off the ground. Yeah, I was telling him, hey, when I was in high school, that was the style. We all had platform shoes. Yeah. Some of the gals had ridiculously high ones. They were like four inches or something. <laughs> I, di I didn't go quite that high, but yeah. We had a friend and my dad said they were her moon boots. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I did still. My, my prom shoes were yeah huge four inch heels and the the toe was like this thick i still have them in the closet somewhere yeah so yeah i wore them to prom and one of my friends said oh my gosh you have spice girl shoes which she was right i did <laughs> yeah yeah if you're old enough to remember those <clears throat> Yeah, I cannot wear very high shoes anymore. I have these uh, four inch heels and they look really nice, but oh, I can't really wear them anymore, even for just a couple of hours. If I wear them to a, an event, even when we're sitting down for a good part of the time. Yeah, I get so sore the next day. My back, my, my legs. Yeah, it throws everything out of alignment, so. I'm not getting rid of them. I love them, but yeah, they are, uh, they're definitely not good for me. I have, um, some kind of connective tissue problems and yeah, so I have to be really careful because I can get things out of alignment really easily. So yeah, and I'm at the age where it's like, you know what? I'm not willing to do the whole pain is beauty thing. <laughs> I'd rather be comfortable. And when you're younger, you know, you put up with more. But uh, yeah, as you get older and things get more sore, it's like, yeah, forget it. <laughs> I care more about function than fashion nowadays. Mm. Yeah, I saw a meme saying, you know, if you die in what you're wearing, that'll be your ghost outfit for all eternity. I said, well, at least it'll probably be something comfortable then. <laughs> Yoga pants. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking, if that's true, imagine that would suck having to wear like a corset for all of eternity. Ooh. Yeah, I love looking at like historical fashions and movies and stuff, but boy, am I glad I don't have to wear them. Yeah, very uncomfortable. Yeah, I'll dress up, you know, once or a couple times a year. And then after that, think, thank goodness I don't have to dress like that all the time because yeah, that would drive me nuts. Oh. Yeah, so we'll have over 200 uh, stitches in this session because there's a bit extra here and this was pretty much empty, these two big squares and there's a bit there. So yeah, we should be over, just over 200 stitches for this. Okay. Yeah, so fortunately, I said they went up to Northwest Territories. They didn't get diverted. Because, yeah, that's been a problem for my husband this, oops, last few months with all the fires. He has to go to, uh, to job sites way out of town. And, uh, yes, there's a lot of closures and detours. And sometimes, even though you check the news and the alerts, they're not always on there. By the time you get there, you know, they've just closed the road or something or 
they forgot to go and update it and so you didn't know and you have to go three hours out of your way so yeah thankfully they uh they got there all right because it was um oh geez i think like a 12 hour drive to get out there so yeah thankfully there was no extra time added to that it feels almost like it got a knot back there let me just take a look see if the knot will pull free but I'm not trying to pull the mm. pull the actual parked thread out yuck and there's a teeny one I'm thinking though it's not gonna make a big bump so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to secure it kind of stretch it out yeah there's a bit of a loop back there but what I'm gonna do is tack it down so it's not sort of flopping around back there yeah that's kind of annoying just take a look at it again yeah yeah so I managed to kind of pull it apart thread that is okay yeah unfortunately nope yeah so I managed to kind of pick it free of the knot now there's a loop back there so I'm gonna have to uh, tack it down find myself a scrap piece of thread here. Yeah, I was working on Firefly yesterday, so I have to switch my uh, ends uh, jar around. For the time being, I'm saving them and maybe I'll do something artsy with them when I'm done, who knows. Maybe I'll just chuck them out at the end, who don't know. Anyway, yeah. Gonna just thread a scrap piece through this loop here and then draw it along across the back and then that just sort of smooths it down. There we go. Yeah, there. So I picked the knot out so there's no lump and now that I've drawn this loop taut across the back, it won't be in my way be snagged by other threads so there we go yeah that's better nice and smooth now so I couldn't get my fabric perfectly taut because uh I don't have it clamped in that far side because I wanted it as close to my left hand here as possible while I'm working yeah talking about not throwing things out of alignment I have to be careful that I don't make myself reach too far in awkward positions or, yeah, that's gonna hurt, so. Yeah, much rather adjust the work to accommodate my posture than muck up my posture to deal with around the work, yeah. Oh. oh, pardon me. Man, I even had to go to bed early last night. I wasn't feeling so great. I think again because of the, the smoke. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to be dealing with this until the snow flies. Until winter comes properly. Ugh. Yeah, unfortunately... Yeah, sort of 
every year we get wildfires and some of them they just cannot extinguish them we have to wait until the cold and the snow does it for us but yeah this year is really bad like they said it's it's been the worst year on record so yeah unfortunately so yeah saying about um my husband and son's work yeah there's a there's no elevator and the equipment they need to get is off the uh, 17th floor. Yeah, 1-7, so yeah. <laughs> Which is why my husband couldn't do it himself, because it's heavy. So yeah, like they have a dolly, and they're going to strap it onto that. And take it apart as much as they can to reduce the uh, the weight. But yeah, I mean, there's, there's really only so much they can do, and it, it is a two-person job. And yeah, they were looking to find someone and everybody had their own stuff they were busy on and so my husband suggested well we could uh we could hire my teenager he's looking for work anyway and uh he's come and helped dad before not really paid for it usually just you know for fun but uh but yeah he's pretty excited he's gonna get paid for it he's even gonna get overtime too so yeah that's pretty awesome yeah he should definitely be able to buy his new computer once he gets paid for this because uh yeah which is good because yeah his old computer oh i'm trying to think it's at least three or four years old and he uses it for gaming so yeah they don't they don't last terribly long My computer's still running pretty strong. I do play games, but not like open world games like my son plays. I play like just little downloaded games that you can get off of, you know. Like I like to play little time management games and stuff off the Big Fish game website. So it's not very, yeah, it doesn't take up a lot of uh, processing power as say something like, you know, Brick Rigs or Roblox or Minecraft which is what my kiddo loves to play. Yeah, he likes to uh, build the cars and then crash them because in the brick rigs, it makes it like it's out of Lego bricks. And then when it crashes, the bricks fly apart. So yeah, he just loves that. Cause uh, before the computer, he did that in real life. He would, uh, <clears throat> he would build uh, little cars out of out of Lego and then crash them into the uh, into the legs of the coffee table. So those are all uh, <laughs> scarred up. But uh, yeah, and he would build them sort of loosely on purpose so that they would break apart when they impacted. So <clears throat> he'd say he's running crash tests. I'm like, you know, maybe that'll be a job when you get older. Since you, you like doing that so much. Well, he would watch videos like on YouTube of uh, them running crash tests and analyzing the, you know, the impact and the effect it would have on the occupants and all that. Yeah, he's quite fascinated by that stuff. So like, well, maybe you'll be an engineer like dad. <laughs> That's definitely where you get it from. Or he's pretty good at drawing. And I said, well, that didn't come from my side. Yeah, I am hopeless at that. <laughs> Although my sister is a pretty decent artist. She does some painting and uh, so did my grandma. So, but yeah, definitely not directly from me, but uh, my husband's pretty good at it. And uh, so is uh, his mom and actually a few of um, his siblings. Yeah, one of them, she made a little money on the side doing digital art for people, custom digital art. So yeah. She does paints and painting and stuff like that too. So yeah, like I said, yeah, it definitely didn't come from me. I am no good at it. Okay, 501. This is why this is my kind of art. Individual pixels, you know, on predetermined size squares. I tried a free form embroidery when I was in high school, but uh, yeah, I had similar problems as I have to drawing or painting or whatever. Just not very good at that stuff. 
I almost tied a knot in my thread, but I managed to catch it before it was past the point of no return. <laughs> Being able to undo it there. So yeah, I'm gonna cook myself a bunch of uh, fish and stuff while they're away. <laughs> wow, my son likes uh, salmon, but my husband is not a, a seafood fan. Yeah, so hopefully my headache doesn't make me mess up too bad. Yeah, it's just at the point where, yeah, it hurts, but I don't really want to lie in bed all day. I want to get some stuff done, so, yeah. It's sort of a dull ache, so I'll deal with it. <laughs> Once I am done filling this in, it'll be time to go to the far left to start a uh, new pass across this piece. So, ooh. And it'll be a whole bunch of different colors because it's water and sky and none of these purple flowers for a while. Yeah, though I did a bunch of the pale white already, so. Hopefully it won't be too long before I get to the peacock again. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there's some bigger blocks in here today, so it should go by pretty quickly, I think. See how long it takes. when I do that. There, didn't uh, have the needle close enough to the end of the thread, so there's any four strands coming through there, that will not work. You have to be careful because if you stitch for any length of time with it like that, yeah, it becomes almost impossible to pull the, the end out. been making some progress on Firefly, but uh, I don't think I'm going to reach Inara's head until probably the fall. Yeah, I still got quite a bit of the uh, Serenity symbol to finish, and it's got a lot of colors in it. Oh, I did something wrong here, didn't I? Let me see. Okay, hang on a minute. What have I done? Oh, Oh, okay, my grid line was, yeah, got stitched over, so I was messing myself up. So I did do that one, I believe, yes, and then I am parked for this one. Yeah, it tricked my eyes, so I got to be careful. That's one problem with my uh, stitch and grid lines is that, yeah, they can get wrong and mess me up. In fact, what I think I'm going to do... is I'm going to just pull this back a bit. Yeah. And I'm going to restitch it in where it should be because yeah, that's one th problem with I leave slack in my grid lines and one problem is sometimes they get pulled out of place when I uh when I stitch around them. So, let me just count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 
10, so it should be right here, yes. Yeah, there we go. So I don't get fooled. So there we go. So yeah, that is one drawback to the, uh, the sewn-in grid lines that you've got to be careful of, especially at the edges, but I figured it out. I was talking with you all, <laughs> paying a little less attention, so. There's that, too. Oh, got a bit of a wind out there. Yeah, so if this these uh, smoke is going to stay around until the uh, fires are done, until the winter, then I'm kind of hoping for an early winter. Usually, it's the opposite. I like it to hold off as long as possible, but yeah, I'd really like to see an end to this smoke. Yeah, there's no telling because uh, sometimes we have snow September and then sometimes we don't have any until November. So I always say I'm happy anytime it holds off after Halloween. Yeah. Yeah, this year maybe it'll be better if it uh, shows up earlier. Okay, Uh, someone was saying there's a bit of a disadvantage when you're in high school trying to find a summer job because um, people find the college classes often end earlier and so sort of they get to take the, the summer positions yeah before the high school kids are done their exams so yeah said, well, if it didn't happen this year, can try again next year. You never know. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Oh. We might hit 13% when this is filled, and it's going to be kind of close. Because, yeah, that 0.6% is around 200 stitches, so we'll see. Of course, there always is a little bit of a margin of error, too, with uh, the pattern keeper, yeah. 
it'll say it's a, uh, oops, it'll say it's done. Few stitches before it's actually done. Especially on these uh, ones with high stitch counts. Yeah, the smaller ones, it's more accurate. Like, and I did just a little, uh, little Legend of Zelda um, wedding announcement and it wasn't full coverage. So it only had like a thousand stitches. So yeah, it was much more accurate that time. <laughs> Yeah, I did a couple of them. One relative got one that said linked t uh, together, and then it had uh, Link and Princess Zelda and then the dates below it. And then one I had was, again, Link and Princess Zelda, and it said, it's dangerous to go alone, take this, and there's a heart in between them. And then, yeah, put their names and the date underneath it, so. I was very honored they said they were going to hang it on the wall next to the uh, hand fasting rope from their wedding ceremony. So yeah, I said I was very honored that it's going to get such a special place to, that it's displayed. <laughs> while till I get to that one I think so yeah leave it unthreaded for a bit let's see I'm actually going to head over to the left again work my way back out Yeah, I think this is a color actually I can take out of my tray for a while. Yeah, it's done. And I don't think we use it much over on the other side. No, it's not going to be used again till I get to this far right side with the leaves here. So I'll take it out of my tray and put it back in my envelope. Thirty-nine thousand, so we won't hit forty thousand during this session, but closing in on that. And then, yeah, to make my original goal of uh, five percent, I'd have to do another five thousand. But yeah, we're getting into the later stages of the month, so we'll see. I don't know whether that's that's going to happen or not. And if it doesn't, that's not the end of the world. just a guesstimate, so.
yeah, the nice thing about focusing on fewer projects is get them done faster. Yeah, I've seen some where people have, you know, tons in rotation, like 50 or even 60. It's like, wow, that's uh, that would be too much for me to keep track of, I think. And I'd like to get, I like to have finishes, you know. I enjoy the process, but I do like to have finished projects too. Yeah, and I'm thinking like that is a huge investment in so much fabric. You know, cross stitch fabric is not cheap. Yeah, because I was looking into maybe getting some 16 count for some of my upcoming bigger projects. Like uh, I got a couple Thomas Kincaid ones, which are like, you know, 700 by 400 or something. Like I have. Yeah, one that's close to 400,000 stitches and one that's over 300. And uh, I do have pieces of 14 count big enough. However, they are not gridded. So that is a lot of gridding to sew on. So yeah, I don't know whether I'm going to use it or not. I did buy it, but I might be willing to buy some 16 count uh, easy count that's already gridded and um, yeah so I've been looking into that I haven't decided yet and I've I've got some time to make up my mind because I still got like three or four years in projects that are you know already the fabrics ready to go before I have to make up my mind. So we'll see when I get closer. I don't think I'm gonna do more, any more 18 count. I have two projects that are an 18 count, the Firefly and the Stained Glass Zelda. And I do like them, but I am finding with the 18 count that it is a little harder to get the needle through, even with me not leaving, you know, gaps the way I stitch. Yeah, I'm finding in the high confetti areas it does get a bit a bit tight and because I'm using two strands there as well so obviously it's you know thicker than using two strands on this count which is what I use here so so yeah like I'm gonna finish them but I don't know if I'm gonna start any new more projects on 18 count or if I'm gonna go to 16 count which I think will be I have stitched on 16 count before and I did like it so it's just harder to find, you know, the most, the most uh, popular sizes for Ada is 14 count and 18 count. Yeah. 16 is harder to find. Yeah, I do like the idea of not having to sew on my own gridding. I do it when I have to, but yeah. And apparently someone said that the Zwiegart Easy Count actually does have the lines printed sort of between the stitches and not on the stitches. So we'll see, because that's what I prefer. Not having to decide whether line one is the gray or line zero is the gray kind of thing. So, yeah. But yeah, I definitely don't think I'm going to go any smaller than an 18 count. It is. I think that would be too much for me. And then I'd have to get to the point where I was stitching with one by one. And then that means no loop starts, or at least, well, you can do a loop start with a single strand, but it's not the same as doing a loop start with two, obviously, which is very easy. So, That, who knows, never say never, right? <laughs> yeah, it's like, I always said I would never, I would never prefer ebooks. Now I do, you know, so. <laughs> mm. 
You never know. I didn't think I was going to stitch from a, an app either. There were people doing that. I was like, wow, really? People stitch from a screen? But uh, yeah, once I got Pattern Keeper, yeah, I never want to go back. So. Oh, so keeping a big bottle of water near me and I'm trying to stay hydrated to try and help with that headache because I know getting dehydrated is certainly not going to help so yeah yeah I had a feeling that was only one strand made it through the eye of the needle and that's no good okay too fuzzy to thread that there. Yeah, a little bit slower going. There's quite a few color changes here, but planning to stick around until this corner is done for today's session. and then no pin stitches this close to the edge. Yeah, because I don't want the ends going past the edge of the design, so I make sure I draw them in towards the middle. Keep them from going in the wrong direction, showing up where I don't want them to. this count anyway. If I can pin stitch at least five stitches from the edge, then I do it. Anything closer to the edge and I draw it along the back. Okay, should be able to do a few in a row now of this color. Yeah, so I had people ask, like, what are you going to do with yourself, you know, all by yourself for a week? It's like, oh, that's no problem. <laughs> yeah, I'm someone who does not mind being alone. I like my own company.
Okay, we will finally pass the 100 stitch mark. Come on, let go. I'm not even knotted for Pete's sake. There, it's just the ends. This thread were kind of twisted around. Didn't want to come through. Oops, darn it. <laughs> Needle fell right off. Just dropping to untangle some thread. I think I'll slip right off of it. <laughs> readjusting my side tensioners there. Get the fabric a little more taut. Yeah, I'm amazed by people who can stitch in hand without any frame or anything that would that would aggravate the heck out of me. I like my fabric to be taut as much as possible anyway. Gotcha.
Oh, darn it. Sorry, y'all. I have a eyelash or something in my eye, so I'm just going to go rinse that out, and I'll be right back. So, hang on. Okay, we're back. Yeah, I've got... It was an eyelash, yeah. So, you know, eyelashes are supposed to keep things from getting in your eye, but I swear, whenever I have something in my eye, it's almost always an eyelash, so... <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, when I was a kid, I was really freaked out of the idea of the eye wash, you know, eye bath things. But uh, then I was tree climbing and uh, a piece of, it was a cherry tree and a piece of the bark came off and fell in my eye. And it was like that thin papery kind of bark. Oh my gosh, it was awful. It felt like a razor blade in there. It was one of the most painful things I ever experienced. So then, yeah, my grandma had an old, you know, uh, antique eye wash ceramic cup from like the 1800s. That's all they had. But I, yeah, I was willing to do anything to make the pain stop. So, yeah. Yeah, after that, it didn't bother me anymore. But yeah. <clears throat> I remember when I was in, uh, I was taking swimming lessons and they were trying to get, you know, kids to open their eyes in the water. And uh, they put coins on the bottom of the pool, so you had to dive for them, and you couldn't get them unless you could see what you were doing. I mean, you could reach down and try to feel for them, but you weren't going to get them very easily. Yeah, uh, stuff like that. Or they had, uh, they had you put your face in the water, and they held a colored ring underneath and told you to tell them what color it was. If you got it right, then you know you got a you got a reward. Yeah, and it's a hard fear to overcome for a lot of us, though I think. It's just instinctive, right? You want to close your eyes to keep anything else, even the water. Especially because in pools, the chlorine stings. So, yeah. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, I did have an eyelash in it, so. Yeah, or I scratched my cornea once. I was trying to sort of use my finger to sort of rub an eyelash out of my eye, but I accidentally caught with my nail and scratched my cornea. Oh my gosh. That was, again, one of the most painful things I ever experienced. And the worst was I couldn't even open my uninjured eye very easily because when you open one eye, it pulls the other eyelid. You know, your eyes want to open and close together. And uh, yeah, so it would put pressure on the injured one. It was, oh, it was not good. We actually had a provincial election too, the the next day. I could barely see, so yeah, I had to, uh, I went there and my husband had to sort of walk me to the voting booth with my eyes shut. And then he had to stand apart so that I could crack open my eye for a second, mark my ballot, and then help me take it to the ballot box to, to uh, cast my vote. Because uh, yeah, like he's not allowed to be in the ballot box with me so that he can't be influencing my vote or whatever. So, like, they do have people there to help for those who are disabled and need help to mark their ballot. But, yeah, you have to make sure you're not being influenced, right, that you're casting your vote freely. But, yeah, so I said, you know, if you didn't uh, vote, you know, what's your excuse? Because I went with a scratched cornea. That hurts so bad. Oh, thankfully, though, the one good thing is they heal pretty quickly. So... It was really bad for about a day and a half. And then after that, it was sore, but not not horribly painful. And then by like about the third day, it was back to normal. So, but yeah, it was, it was extremely painful. Yeah, I went to the, the emergency room and they, they flushed it out to make sure there was nothing <clears throat> still in there scratching it up which there wasn't and he actually showed me I don't know exactly how but that you could actually see where the scratch was yeah and uh then he put some numbing stuff in and uh, then he gave me some you know antibiotic eye drops so that I wouldn't get an infection and then I said that was fine until I got home and about an hour later that numbing stuff wore off oh my gosh I swear it hurt almost more than when I originally injured it 
I don't know, maybe because I got some relief. So when it started up again, yeah, it wasn't good. I ended up actually taking a nap for a few hours so that I could keep my eyes closed. And uh, yeah, it wasn't as bad when I woke up a couple hours later. So like I said, it's kind of like when you burn your tongue or whatever, it hurts like heck, but that's one part of your body that heals really fast. So thankfully, yeah. But yeah, not an experience I would care to repeat. Or one time I remember I was, uh, I was getting some cornstarch out to thicken some gravy and I dropped the container on the counter and it fell and the top blew off and it basically like exploded in my face and I got a face full of it right in my eyes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that was, it was so bad. I had to stumble over by feel because I couldn't see anything. You couldn't open my eyes to find the sink so I could splash water in my face to rinse it out. But holy cow. Yeah, sometimes I swear I feel like I should go through life with safety goggles on. Oh. Too clumsy by half. Like I said, I guess there's a reason why in movies they show, you know, somebody throwing sand or dirt or whatever into someone's eyes to gain the advantage. Because, yeah, you, you can't think of anything else but getting that pain to stop. It's intense. Yeah. Come on. Both those holes are kind of full. Neither one wanted to really come up smoothly. Kind of a struggle, but managed in the long run. Sometimes what I will do is take a second needle and sort of hold the threads out of the way with it while I get the working needle through to keep it from snagging and displacing the threads that are already there, making it look kind of messy. Yeah, man, still over 5,000 of this color. So yeah, let's see how long it takes to fill the rest of this in. Another hour? I don't know.
maybe not an hour because yeah there's not as much confetti here so we'll see This next square here, I can see there's a lot of one color there. Yeah, so I think 5% was like 15.5, and I, I don't think I'm going to reach that. Just closing in on 13% here, so yeah. Because yeah, 2% is actually like another 6,000 and something stitches, so yeah, I think that might be, might be a bit more than I can manage. That's all right. Yeah, it all depends because when I get to the peacock again, I'm doing his neck and his chest and that's like three or four colors. So that part should go by pretty quickly. But then we hit the wall with the flowers again and that will slow things down. So yeah, it's all sort of, sort of an ebb and flow between those two. Four, seven. Goodness, this piece of floss was really fighting me to be able to line both ends up there. That's funny, I lose use a loop starts when I'm mending stuff too. <laughs> Learned that from cross stitching, but yeah. I'm just having to sew a, a button on or just quickly sew up a popped seam, yeah. Just use a loop start now to tie knots. <laughs> yeah, because I always found it was a pain trying to tie the knot, sort of had to do it a couple of times so it wouldn't go through the fabric and having to sort of make sure the knot closed in on the same spot could be a real pain sometimes. So yeah, the loop start makes that a lot easier.
Oh, nothing like dropping your needle and then you can't find where it went. Ah, there it is. Yeah. Into my chair, and I'd rather find it with my hand than with my behind. <laughs> This will be another color I think I can pack away in my envelopes because I won't be needing it on the far side. Yeah, basically all the purples and pinks I have out in my working tray right now can go back in the envelopes. It'll be a different set of colors for a while. So we may not quite reach 13% completed, I think. Yeah, I don't think there's enough stitches here for that. 12.97, so we'll see. But I think we'll be a little bit shy of that. I don't know why this color seems to like to twist more. I don't know if it's just more noticeable because of the color it is or if it really does twist more, but it just seems that way to me. Have to be careful to watch it and catch it. Yeah, I don't know if it's like the dyeing process makes some threads more prone to tangling than others. Different, you know chemicals or whatever they use in the dyes might do that or maybe it's just my imagination who knows <laughs>
Yeah, I think we'll probably reach to 12.99%, but not quite get to that 13. If we even reach that, we're at 12.98, so we'll see. Yeah, wind's really picking up out there. one reason why I often don't leave the really short ones threaded because that tends to happen. It just falls right off.
here my working tray will be basically empty. <laughs> to start filling it up again once I get to the other side. Yeah, there's only 30 spots, so I can't have all my colors out, but then generally I'm not using all of them at once. Depends where I am in the picture, so. I usually don't run out of space in it. Pardon me. Oh, look at that, will be exactly 5,000 left of this color once I mark this one done. Yeah, there we go. See if this will roll over to 99 during this. I'll filling this in. Not yet. <laughs> no, don't want to rip out a stitch. going to be stitch one and pause so it doesn't really matter what I pick. Yeah, still at 98. <laughs> Like I said, it will be over 200 to fill in this corner.
that. We've done 200 stitches now. Okay, we're at 12.99, so yeah, I don't think it's going to roll over. We'll see whether it will or not. It'll be pretty close. Yeah, it'll probably be I start doing the next pass, and after I do, you know, two stitches, it'll roll over or something if it hasn't by the end of this session. <laughs> Ooh. But yeah, I think we're less than about 30 stitches here, but it needs, yeah, more than 30 generally, so. Two, one, one, two left of this stitch until I do this one and mess it up. Then it'll be two, triple one. Nice and neat again.
Okay, on the home stretch, last few stitches. Yeah, so when I finish these, there'll be exactly a thousand left of this color. <laughs> That's cool. We'll see if it goes to 13 or it'll stay at 12.99%. But either way, that first pass is finished. And I think I have eight more to go. All right, let's see. Nope, stayed at 12.99. Kind of thought it would. Oh, look at that, 222 done today. Cool. But yeah, that whole first pass is done. So uh, as usual, thank you so much for joining me today, and I hope to see you here again next time. All right, thanks everyone. Bye.